Are you a painting company that uses Paint Scout to estimate projects? Maybe you're a sales rep that uses Paint Scout and you're struggling to stay on top of all the follow ups and keeping track of which clients you need to follow up with when? Well, I'm going to show you how to automatically create follow up tasks in your CRM so that you can know exactly and on a consistent cadence, I need to follow up with this person two days from now, three days from now, four days from now, from whatever you want, automatically just by sending the quote to the customer inside of Paint Scout. If that's of interest, stick around. That's what we're going to be covering. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Chris. I'm the owner of Boolean Automation, which has a review software specifically designed for the painting industry, as well as an automation consulting arm where myself and my team come in and help automate business processes. We've done this for over a dozen painting companies nationally, and we even have a course that you or someone on your team can watch to do exactly what we do. It only happens four times a year and we do have a wait list. So if you're interested in getting in the next launch of that course, you can put your email down in the link below for that. Without further ado, let's get into this topic. All right, so when it comes to Paint Scout, one of the things that many people don't know about because in Zapier, they don't have a publicly listed a Zap you can reach out to their support and anyone can get this, but the Zapier process, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but Paint Scout's Zapier integration is an invite only integration. So what we do here at Boolean is we automate all sorts of stuff for painting companies. And I wanted to walk through just a really common situation that I think is a great opportunity for a painting company to automate based on Paint Scout in particular. So before we dive in, I just wanna show, this is a, a snippet. I just took all of these key events in the life cycle of a project for a painting company. So this is what I would identify as the opportunities that a painting company has to automate different things. So you can see here that request an estimate from a form on a website, qualifying or following up with leads, booking an estimate, if it, depending on whether or not the estimate was completed successfully, sending a paint scout quote, which is what we're gonna dive into today. When the deal is moved to the one stage, you could automate several things. If a client requests to change a contract after they've already Already accepted one. When your crew is assigned to the particular job, when the job starts and you actually are doing work on the job, when the job is completed or when the job closes out. So any of these are, again, these are kind of the key milestones in my opinion, where there's prime opportunity for automation to occur in a painting business. And I always like to just show, this is not just random ideas in my head. These are defined processes that we have laid out for painting companies before. And those are all of the key milestones with a process map that we train painting companies on the most efficient way to do this. So diving into this today, I want to talk about some opportunities to create automations around the Paint Scout quote being sent in particular. So if you're using Paint Scout, you're very familiar. You create a quote for someone, you can save that, and then you can actually go ahead and send the quote to the customer. Nothing surprising there. But what many people don't know is that inside of Zapier, when you connect your Paint Scout to Zapier, it has the opportunity to have a series of actions happen after this. So if Zapier is new to you, I'll put a link to another video that I've created on just trying to understand Zapier and how you might be able to use Zapier for your painting company. If you are familiar with Zapier, then we'll just continue right along here. So Paint Scout in their most, in their latest, in their latest release 1.0.19, they have these triggers that can initiate a, an automation. So you can have when a contact is created, invoice sent, invoice status change, invoice tag change, the quote being sent, quote status change, or quote tag change. So the one that I like is this quote sent. And this will trigger anytime the quote is sent or resent as it says down here in the description. So we're going to go ahead and connect this and then make sure that you connect to the your correct Paint Scout account. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So once you get that connected, we'll continue and we want to do the quote view and the quote type, we're gonna just make this for any. So we're gonna continue there as well. And now it's waiting for us to actually send a quote. So I'm gonna go back to my Paint Scout account and I already have one here ready for me for the sake of demonstration. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit send and I'm going to send this to Luke at BooleanReview.com and we're not gonna send a text. So we go ahead and send proposal. 
And then it takes about 30 seconds for Zapier to realize that there was a quote sent. So with some magic editing here, we'll wait until it shows up. And it took about 45 seconds or so, but here we have our Skywalker quote. Awesome. So we'll continue on here. Now, because we have that data in here, the next step is to decide what do you want to have happen? And the best way I like to think about this, I've already made a little map here, but there are a series of things that happen every time you send a quote. So I would ask you to sit down. I love using Miro. I'm going to put a link to Miro in the description down below. You're welcome to use that. But these are some typical processes that I see estimators or sales reps do after they send a quote. So things like, I got to go back and update the deal properties in my CRM system. I want to send a follow-up email to a client. Maybe I want to create a follow-up task to remind me to call that person two days from now or send a follow-up text. So any of these are all good options. I'm going to go ahead and just drop these in here, but just to show you how easy this can be, we can come in here. I'm a big fan of HubSpot. Let me know actually in the comments, what do you use for your CRM system? What type of videos would you love me to create to try and dial this these processes in for other CRM systems? I think HubSpot's great because it just has so many integrations and opportunities here. But you can go into here, make sure you're connected to the right HubSpot account. First thing you're going to do is click create engagement. So this engagement is, and actually I'll, I'll name the title of this step to create follow-up task in HubSpot. So we can continue, make sure you're connected to the right account. All right, so the engagement type that we want is a task, and we want to assign this to the rep that was in Paint Scout. So I can go in here and select whichever the owner of the quote was. So owner right here, owner email. So we're gonna use the owner email from Paint Scout to assign it to that, that user inside of HubSpot. And the task here we could have would be follow up with, and you could even take the customer name from here. So primary, or let's say contact first name. And we've got contact first name, where it's Russ regarding quote and the task description here we could just say two day follow up with client and the status here we could say that we want this as not started and the due date this is actually a great example this is a, a really handy trick here we can do a formatter so i love using this formatter by zapier super handy tool and we're going to do a date and time event and the transform that we want is add or subtract time. So the input is going to be the time when this was sent. So a really great trick here is just input the code and it's written like this. So these bracket, so double bracket, zap underscore meta underscore human underscore now. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the description down below so you can copy and paste that. But what that does is it just puts in the current time whenever this runs. And then the expression that we want, it says here, we you can do the uh, provide the amount of time you'd like to add or subtract. And the examples that they have are plus eight hours, one minute, one month, minus two days, whatever. So we're going to do plus two days. And the format that we want it to be in is just going to be, I like the month, day, year format. So we're going to do this one and the from format you can see right here it's in the month day year with hours and minutes in the am pm style so we can do where is that at month day year actually i'm going to go ahead and leave it blank i'm pretty sure that it figures it out we'll see so we're going to test this step so right now is 10:29. And it output 1031. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So now I can always really big on adjusting this or, or labeling every step. So adjust date for two days from now. So you could create this for three days, whatever you want. But now we've got create a follow-up task in HubSpot and click test step. Uh, whoops, forgot to go to this follow-up task here. So we're going to go action. And now we need to put in a due date. So when do you want that task due? And we're taking the output from step two, which we just adjusted to two days from now. Um, as we continue on here, so we're going to go ahead and click continue. And it's saying invalid input JSON on line one. So it doesn't like Russ or it doesn't like the email that I put in. So no problem. What we can do here is 
So for the assigning it to somebody, the easiest thing to do, here's another advanced step, is we can go in and add a formatter step again. And many people don't know you can do this, but because HubSpot in this case, and depending on the CRM you use, you may or may not need this, but there's a utility function here for the formatter that is called a lookup table. So we can create a lookup table that will look up uh, the key or the value. So in this case, we're going to look up the owner email, which is what we tried to pass into HubSpot and it didn't work. And so we're going to put in that email address. So I typed out that email. And then the return value, if we go into HubSpot, is going to be that person's user ID. And the way that we can find that value is actually, if I go here to the assign to field, you'll see that it actually gives us the value that it wants right here, 246682254. And the reason I do that is so that I can now copy it. And I'm gonna go back to this lookup table and I'm gonna paste in the value. So what this does is it says, I'm going to take the owner email and look up that email and then return the value here. So you could add in another you know, email of a different estimator. So if we go back to, in this case, HubSpot, I can look at another one here and say, I'm gonna use this one as well. And this one is gonna be 246. Six six four two five eight. So that one, I can copy that and paste it into this lookup table as well. So depend. Oh, whoops, put it in the wrong spot. So this one is going to be so depending upon which one. It's also nice to have a fallback value. So if it can't find it, who do you want to assign it to? You could do like a sales manager or something. But now you can see when we test this. The number that we're putting in so we're testing the step and it outputs the correct id so again always name your steps in zapier convert estimator email to estimator id and we can continue and now on this one the action the person that we're going to assign it to is going to be the custom value of this estimator id output so when we go continue and test step, we should see that engagement has been created. The last thing we need to do though, is it says emails of the contact objects that should be associated with this engagement. So the contacts emails is going to be the same email that we used in Paint Scout for that contact. So the final thing that we do here is we're going to search for the word email and then we want to have the contact email be the person that we are associating with the with this engagement. So it's it's going to assign the task to the owner, the deal owner, which would be the estimator, but it's going to associate the task to this contact, which is exactly what we want. So we'll go ahead and click continue and click retest. Make sure there's no errors. And we can publish that. So now if I go look inside my HubSpot account, okay, so if I go in here, I can go to tasks and I'm going to have it be assigned to the person that I created it for. And remember I had this assigned for, uh, we'll do due date is this week. And we are going to do due date is next week. So we have follow up with Russ regarding quote. So these are the two ones that we made the first test and the second test. And I can open this up and see one of these, the task in here is going to say, where is that task activities? So I have a task here designed to Russ 
and you'll see that the associate it is associated with the contact that we used as well. So that is how you would do something as simple as create a follow-up task a couple days from now. Again, back in this process, uses the same exact process of like, you could add in a text that integrates with your texting software, like text requests is a super common one, or Sakari, um, and you could add in a note that send a message every time a quote is sent. You could have a step... By the way, there's a, another video in here that I created. It's super detailed on how do you get the details in your Paint Scout quote to be updated inside of your CRM. That's a longer, more in-depth video, but I'll link that below if that's of interest to you. But that's, yeah, super simple process. I'm curious, what else would you guys like to see? Uh, leave a comment. I'm gonna put down a link to my calendar if you'd like to schedule a free consult. People are always astounded when I say this, but I literally work only with painting companies. We're super deep in that market. We've done so much work in automating business processes. We typically save about an hour of data entry per project for painting companies. Our ideal customer is between four to seven million in annual revenue. So if you're in that ballpark, we'd love to chat. If you're smaller than that, don't worry. Happy to help or give tips or pointers any ways that I can. But I'd love to get in the comments. What other videos would you like to see? What CRMs, what softwares are you using? Do you like project management softwares that you're struggling with? However we can help, let us know. My name is Chris from Boolean, where we free you up to do what you love. Thanks for watching watching guys.